The sand dome starts out very similarly to the steam dome. It has a side piece with a wavy bottom and we're also reusing the same template uh, that we used on the steam dome and the sand dome template is here on our template page. Um, its overall dimensions are four and one eighth by one and one quarter, which is what we cut this piece of lightweight chipboard to be. And this piece is scored, just like it was on the steam dome. This piece that the curved uh, element comes out of is not scored. Those are both lightweight chipboard. And then out of medium weight chipboard, we have three circles at one and one quarter and one circle at one and one half. So I'm going to start out by using my templates and cutting out my two pieces of lightweight chipboard. So I have my two uh, pieces of lightweight chipboard cut out using the templates. And just like when we did the steam dome, I'm going to use the green lines on the template to mark some lines on my chipboard and those will be my center points so that I will know uh, how to align this for the test fit. And then I can just take a piece of temporary adhesive, go ahead and join this together into a circle, stack up the one and one quarter inch chipboard pieces and just hold them in there. That'll give it some shape. And then I can take it over to the locomotive and test the fit. So my test fit was good. And now I can go ahead and join the sides together with a piece of the one inch cardstock. And I've drawn a line of uh, three quarters of an inch down from the straight edge here before I started. And I'll just trim off any excess here. Give that a good burnish. Just come in here just like we did for the steam dome and make sure this wants to be nice and curved. And then we can add some of our one and one quarter inch circles. And I think when I started I said there was three of them, but there's actually four, and that's what's in the cutting guide. I just forgot. So I'm going to take one and two of them. I've taken my one quarter inch hole punch and put some extra holes in. But to start with, I'm going to take one of the solid ones and I'll run a bead of glue along the inside of the straight edge and drop that in. So I've run a bead of glue inside the, that straight edge and I'm going to drop one of these circles in and make sure it stays flush. And we'll just let that set up for a few minutes. And then once that's uh, set up, I'm going to run a bead of glue along that three quarter inch line and take one of my circles that has the hole punched out in it and go ahead and put that in there. And that'll help the dome keep its shape. So my bead of glue is on that three quarter inch line in there. And I'll just set this aside so it can set up while we work on the top. Now for the top we want to start out by training our little slanty edged semicircle that we have here so that it wants to form a band, much like we did for the steam dome. Now the difference here is that to create this, we're going to take one of our, uh, the last solid one and one quarter inch circle, and we're going to fit this piece around it. Now, 
it has not been sized what you'll want to do is just fit that around there and then when you see where the overlap is go ahead and take pencil and just mark where that is going to get trimmed off make sure you hold the some pressure on your one and one quarter inch circle and so everything is sitting flat on your work surface now trim that off and I'll just test fit it here and that fits well so what I'm going to do here is just glue part of this at a time it's really hard to to do this all in one go so I'm just going to do about half of it run a bead of glue hold the quarter inch circle down on my work surface and hold that part of the circle that I put glue on next to it. I'll just move it a little bit so that the glue doesn't set onto my uh, patty paper here. But I'll just hold that for a few minutes until that sets up and then I'll continue gluing around the other edge. And then once the glue has set up on this much of it, we'll run a bead of glue along the inside edge of this larger size side and then we can put the one and one half inch circle should fit just inside of there and be flush with the edge. Now you may need to take like the tip of your craft knife or something to encourage it to fit in there. And then and turn it upside down and give it a little pressure. And let that top set aside to dry. To cover the sides of the sand dome, I'm using a piece of decorative paper that is one and a half inches tall by four and three quarters inches long. And if you're going to use the stamp paper like I am, um, have have your um, you'll have part of a stamp. So make sure that the top part is even with the edge of a stamp, and then. We want any joins to be on the dip side, of course, because that won't show as much. And so I'm going to figure out where I want um, my paper to start and end. And then just wrap this around. And I'm going to have a full stamp on the outside here. And this join that I have, I want that to be in the middle of one of the dips. So I'll go ahead and get that attached. And I want to make sure that I keep it flat even with the top of the uh, dome. And if you ended up with any of this coming over the top edge, just take your emery board and give that a little rub so that everything is nice and flat on the top. And once you have that attached, just like we did with the steam dome, we'll go ahead and trim that bottom edge carefully around. And then I've added some brown ink around my last inch and a quarter circle. And I'll go ahead and run a bead of glue inside and keep this even with the protruding no more than the little dents here where it goes up just like we did for the steam dome. So now our sides are, are covered and, and done and we can turn our attention to the top and I'm much like with the steam dome I'm going to use this template as a guide to see how big a piece of paper I need. So I'm having a little bit of an overlap here, maybe an eighth of an inch. So I think I just need to add about an eighth of an inch to this template when I go to cut it out. And again, I'll add three eighths of an inch on either side, just like I did with the steam dome. 
So I'll get that paper cut out and then I'll be back. So I've got my piece of patterned paper cut out and of course score tape on the back and I'm going to avoid this seam when I start and I'll just center that paper on my side there and then just kind of wrap around keeping it centered as I go. Make sure when you get to this end that you've inked it so that you won't see any white paper showing through. Go ahead and give that a little burnish there. And then we'll just remove our wedges and wrap these ends to the inside top and bottom here. I'm going to make sure, try to cut my wedges so that I don't have it very much bulk and overlap and then I'll use a band of glue to attach them down for added insurance. When you put the little pieces on in the top be careful not to push in too hard here because the one and a quarter inch circle doesn't have uh, any support behind it and you could uh, break that glue so just be careful of that and then I'm going to I measured and I'm just going to fill in a little circle here in the middle with a tiny piece of cardstock just like we did on the steam dome and then I'm just going to take I've got some pine needles um, ink here which kind of matches this uh, paper that I'm using. I'm just kind of going lightly over that top there because I don't want any of that white paper to show. I'll do that down here on the bottom a little too. Sometimes when you've made these cuts, if there's some overhang they may want to show a little bit so that'll take care of that and then I've cut an inch and a quarter circle to go on the top here and then on the bottom of the top I'm going to fill in with a three quarter inch circle of cardstock and that's just so that we have a flatter gluing surface going all the way across. It's not absolutely necessary, but I'd like to put glue on the middle as well as the edges and know that everything is going to stay firmly attached. So when we go to join these two pieces together, look to see where the seam is on the bottom part and match the seam with the top. I'm also going to do a little inking along the edge here of this top before I put it on and just kind of smoothing to make sure that I don't have any kind of pointy edges from where the slits were made. I'm just using the edge of my craft mat there. Then I'm just looking for my join. Here it is. And here's my join there. So I'm going to put these together like that with just some wet glue. Just put a little pressure on that and let it dry. And then I've punched out a one and a half inch circle that I'll attach to the bottom here with some wet glue. We'll just have a little overlap. Just kind of curve it a little bit. Hold that for a few seconds and let it dry. And then the sand dome gets attached in the middle of this next spot. Make sure you keep the seam and the paper towards the back. And that it's sitting nice and plumb. 
So go ahead and use some wet glue to attach that. Now in an actual steam locomotive, there are, I'm not sure if they call them hoses or what, for the sand to come out of the dome and come in front of the, the wheels. And if you wanted to, you could experiment with trying to add some tubing or something to do that. But I, that's one of the things I'm using artistic license for and I'm just not going to have anything um, attached to the sand dome. To make the bell hanger, we're going to start with two pieces of chipboard that are one and three quarter inches wide and two and one eighth tall. Now these have been sized to fit a bell that has a diameter of one inch on the bottom and this bell is about an inch and a quarter tall. So as long as your bell is very similar in size to that, this should work. Now if it's slightly different, I would suggest that you go ahead and make it to these uh, specifications that I'm using here because it only takes a few minutes and then you can test it out. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is draw a one quarter inch line vertically on each side and I'll just do one for now and then get rid of this writing so we can see I'm going to make a spot that is centered left to right and an inch and a half down from the top. So on an inch and a half down from the top and centered left to right and then I've set my compass for an inch and a half and I'm going to put the point of that compass right there on that mark we just made and then draw an arc. And after I've drawn that arc, I'm going to reset my compass to an inch and one eighth, inch and one eighth, and I'm going to put it back in that same spot and draw another arc. So first we had it set at one and a half, and then at one and one eighth. So now we've got kind of a U shape here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And then I'll cut that out of the second piece as well. So now I have my two pieces cut out, and they're going to get connected at the top, but then their legs are going to spread apart a little bit. So the, how we're going to um, accomplish that is to make some little cuts on the inside, and I've just marked these two as inside. And what I'll do is line this up on my craft mat so that the legs are on uh, straight here. And then just bring my ruler up to where the intersection of the uh, side legs and the curved top is. And see what that measurement is. And on mine it is, oh, I would say it's about an, an inch and, let's see, um, it's nine sixteenths or so. It's not really critical what it is. Just have it straight. And then we're just going to lightly score. We don't want to, definitely don't want to go through all of that chipboard. Just a, um, not even quite halfway. And I'll do that on the other piece as well. And those little scores will allow us to attach. We're going to put these pieces together at the top and then it'll be like a, kind of like a sawhorse shape and the little um, tiny pieces that are called the bell hanger base which are just one quarter by three quarters will go in here at the bottom. Um, we want to do one other little cut on each one of these and that is we need to angle the sides on the bottom so that it will sit nicely on top of the locomotive 
and what I'm going to do is just measure up on the inside of each leg an eighth of an inch I'm going to measure up an eighth of an inch on the inside and then we're going to just cut a diagonal let me use my pen from the corner to that eighth inch mark and we'll remove this little piece here so that we get little diagonal legs here and we'll do that on all four legs and the way I cut these little diagonals is I just take my craft knife and line up the corner with that tick mark and a good sharp craft knife will go right down through there and you can get a nice little cut um, without any danger of breaking these legs which are kind of fragile so I'll do that on the other side as well and then you can test to see if this size will work with your bell if you have a different sized bell by just taking something like a binder clamp or something and clamping them together here at the top and using one of the little scraps the little three quarter by one quarter pieces that are going to fit inside of these legs here and you can see does your bell fit in there it's going to hang from a from a jump ring so depending on the size of your jump ring the size of your bell you want to have some clearance take that over to the locomotive and try it but if you have a a bell that's the size that I have here it should work fine so I'm going to cover the insides and the outsides of these um, pieces but not the edges so I'm just going to take a minute and um, take my marker and darken the edges we may need to do that afterwards as well but this way um, we can accomplish most of it at this point so I've cut some pieces of decorative paper here that are two inches by two and a half and I've got four pieces because we're going to cover both, both the front and the back and first we want to cover the fronts so I'm going to just attach this and trim it off evenly on just the fronts and then I'll be back so when we're ready to cut, attach a pattern paper to the insides you can see I removed my score tape backing but I put it back on and kept it down oh about five eighths of an inch or so and what I want to do is just put the, attach it up to the where we um, made our little scores so I've I've done that and then when I go to attach the rest of this down I'm just going to bend these out ever so slightly um, it doesn't have to be much because we're not um, it's it's not a, a big change here but just just enough so that there's a slight bend to it hopefully you can see that see if I can get it at an angle here and uh, then then it will be we've um, reinforced where we made that cut and we'll be able to uh, make the legs kind of come out a little bit so that's how to do the inside so I'll uh, trim this off and do the other one and now I've got my pieces covered and all the edges inked and I'm just going to use some wet glue up here on the curved spot and make sure that I've got the two insides and I can kind of tell that by my slopes here and that everything is nicely aligned and I'll go ahead and glue these just on the tops and while that glue is setting up I'm going to take a moment and cover the tops of my little one quarter by three quarter inch pieces which you can see that I've totally inked and just on the top I'm going to put a little piece of the trim and now that my glue has dried up on, or dried on this top piece I can punch a hole with my crop dial and I've just taken my ruler and centered a mark left to right and then in the middle of this curved piece and because my paper is dark I just used a chalk pencil to do that so now I can take my crop dial and punch that hole 
with I'm punching the hole with the 1 8 inch punch the smaller end also before I punch this hole I just took my pliers and kind of squashed down on this a little bit because the it's just about at the max th thickness that the crop dial can handle if you you don't want to tear the paper of course when you're doing that if you have a Japanese screw punch that would be an alternative so that you wouldn't have to fit it inside of the jaws there so then to finish off these little legs, I'll just use some wet glue and keep the decorative side up and put those in between the legs following that slant. So I'll get that accomplished and then I'll be back. So once you're ends down here are good and dry we can go ahead and attach the bell using a jump ring I think I said between 5 16 and 3 8 whatever works for to get your bell on there so I'll get that attached so here's our bell hanger with the bell attached and then it gets attached in this section I'm not putting any black cardstock underneath it because of I have the decorative trim and I think that's sufficient but you can suit yourself and I'm making sure that um, everything is lined up and plumb and don't do not try to attach this until um, you know wait wait a little while for this glue to cure on your on your legs so that you're not putting undue pressure on there I'll probably I'll wait not just for it to set up but for it to cure a little bit maybe a half an hour or so before I put it on there so I'll do that in a moment and then there's the bell installed on the locomotive and it can jingle and move <laughs> 